Good evening, everyone, and thanks a million for, for, for joining us for a session where we'll be able to give you a bit more detail about the master's program in primary care musculoskeletal and orthopedic medicine. Um, so tonight I'm joined by my colleague, Professor Seamus Morris, um, colleagues from the School of Medicine, and myself, Walter Cullen, to tell you a little bit more about the program, its structure, its outline, and what you might expect to learn um, from your time on the programme if you decide to, um, to, to enrol as a student. So what we'll be talking about is, I suppose, firstly, the, the rationale why you might want to do a postgraduate programme in the first instance. We'll be talking about the structure of this programme. We'll be looking at some of the content of the modules that you might expect to complete and crucially, we'd be looking at some of the fees um, which applied for the 2020 cohort of students. And we'll try and leave sufficient time for some um, interaction and some questions and answers. So the reason why many of us decide to do a programme like this, um, especially those of us who are working in busy, busy clinical jobs, is in order to help us develop a, a special area of clinical interest. Um, and to get a university recognized um, qualification. Um, obviously, you know, kind of with the direction of travel of healthcare in Ireland and internationally, it's very likely there's going to be an increasing amount of clinical care being provided in a general practice and primary care setting. And this will hopefully reduce the waiting times for interventions. And perhaps most importantly, when many healthcare professionals working in the community decide to take on additional qualifications and gain additional experiences is because it can provide an additional um, source of income and revenue stream for them in their practice. So this is the second year um, of this program. It's a clinically relevant and practical program and it's been designed specifically with the needs of busy GPs, physiotherapists, clinical therapists, um, physicians assistants and other healthcare professionals in mind. And we have a wide range of um, specialist contributors. So colleagues from orthopedics, obviously, but also from rheumatology, physiotherapy and general practice, as well as other disciplines uh, relevant to this area will be contributing. Um, most of the program is delivered online. So typically um, the current cohort of students have their online teaching sessions from seven to eight on a Wednesday. But in addition to this, we generally try to have between two and four practical days on each module per semester. Um, these days are very much, you know, kind of focused on, you know, kind of practical clinical skills development and gives us an opportunity to meet with you and for students to meet with each other. As well, you know, there's an opportunity for you to gain some practice and career development. And as well as this, um, the program is very much designed for the needs of the busy clinician in mind and health, hence a lot of the program is delivered online and can be taken at a time that's convenient to individual students. As well as this, the program gives you a recognized qualification from UCD and during your time in the program, you'll be a registered student of the university, which means that you would have the same degree of access to the university resources as all other students on the program. So this is the general structure of the program. It's a program that spans two, two academic years. Um, our first cohort who started last year um, have completed the first semester um, during which they had a specialist module in orthopedics one and a research module and they had a in semester two they had another specialist module orthopedics two and a primary care module now this adds up to 30 credits so if you decide that you want to take uh, an exit at this point, you can graduate with a graduate certificate in primary care MSK. If you decide you want to do the second year, that involves you doing a clinical placement, um, which is a further 30 credits, and then a dissertation, which brings you up to the 90 credits that you would get for the master's program. So our current cohort of students are just about to start year two, just about to start clinical placement in the specialist module three, and they're already well in line for doing their dissertations. So the first year of the module of the program next year, what this will consist of. Um, so in the first semester, which is autumn 2021, there's the orthopedics one module and the research module. 
apologies. The second box there relates to spring 2022. So that contains the second orthopedics module and our module on primary care issues. In year two, you'll have a clinical placement, which is two weeks, and this is 10 eight hour days, which adds up to 20 credits. These are mostly based clinical experiences in a Dublin, in the greater Dublin area, where you'll spend a significant amount of time doing an observership with colleagues in orthopedics and other areas of clinical practice that are relevant to the program. Also then in year two, you'll have a 30 credit dissertation, um, which is a research dissertation where you plan to undertake uh, a piece of research that will hopefully result in a peer reviewed publication on a matter relating to orthopedics and MSK in primary care. I think this might be a good point to introduce some of the team that are involved in, um, in, in, in delivering the program. Um, so I'm Walter Cullen, I'm a general practitioner and my main input into the program is to oversee the program content to ensure that it's relevant to healthcare professionals working in primary care, to provide some academic coordination and oversight. And I work very closely with my colleague, Professor Seamus Morris. Um, so maybe at this point, uh, I might ask you to introduce yourself, um, Seamus. Thanks, Walter. So uh, my name is Seamus Morris. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. My uh, specialist interest is on spine and trauma. And I've been involved in education, I suppose, in terms of orthopedics for, for many years. I've been teaching the trainees in orthopedics, uh, trauma, etc. But I've always been involved in teaching musculoskeletal medicine. And myself and Walter had spoken over the years, and we recognised that really at undergraduate uh, education level, there's really very little training provided in terms of orthopedics. About two weeks in most medical schools is all that's devoted to orthopedics. But at the same time, in a practical sense, in primary care and in the ED setting, musculoskeletal problems pose a huge problem. So together, we put this this course together and. I suppose the course is unique in many respects in that the course is delivered by consultant orthopedic surgeons, rheumatologists and radiologists who are, who are imparting the information. So we're lucky in that we have experts in the field giving the lectures. So the spine lectures, for example, are given by spine surgeons. The lectures in the hip are, are given by uh, hip arthroplasty and soft tissue specialists. So you really are uh, in the happy position if you do decide to do the course that the people that are lecturing you in the area are, are real domain experts in the area they're talking about and it's their bread and butter and day-to-day -day activity. Um, I think Walter, probably the next slide or two, you have kind of a brief outline of some of the rest of the faculty. So uh, a lot of the faculty are orthopedic surgeons around the, the rest of the country, be them in Dublin and, and some from, from a bit further afield. And as I say, they all tend to, uh, to lecture very much on their area of, of, of specialist interest. So they're able to really follow a deep dive into any area that you may wish to, uh, to uh, explore in their, in their specific area. Um, in terms of the course structure itself, outside the, the fact it's delivered by orthopedic surgeons, it's very much practical in terms of the uh, course content. What is just actually flicking on there, Sheila Lockman is uh, the course coordinator. She's, Sheila's currently on maternity leave, but she'll be coming back, Walter, in, when is it, February maybe? Yep. Yeah, so Sheila's a fantastic, very experienced general practitioner uh, with a broad range of, of knowledge in a, a lot of different areas, including MSK, emergency medicine, I think uh, expedition medicine as well is something that Sheila's experienced in as well. So very skilled across a broad range of areas. So we welcome Sheila back in, in February. And, you know, any of those of you who, who decide to do the course, you meet Sheila at that stage. Um, in terms of the, the model of education that we have on the course, it's a blended education model. So um, over the course of the last year with COVID, uh, the course was delivered by distance learning. And as a happy, um, I suppose, opportunity or coincidence for us, that was the way the course was designed anyhow. Uh, I don't know if you slides in this, Walter, or will I keep going? No, okay, I'll, I'll keep waffling on here. So the, the way the course is delivered, it's a, um, a reverse classroom or an inverted classroom model. So you know, the, you'll be given reading material on, on a Monday night uh, of, of a week. And then on the Wednesday evening, the consultant who's delivering the lecture will give an in-person webinar um, covering the material uh, or the material that was referenced on the, the Monday night. So you have a chance to get some background information before you're online, before you have a chance to interact. And they're very much interactive, uh, these lectures that go along. Then 
in year one is very much didactic as Walter outlined there. So over the course of those two uh, modules, we cover basically the full orthopedic syllabus. Uh, and as part of that, there's four workshops which are in person in UCD. And the focus very much on those is on imparting examination skills, uh, ultrasound uh, guided injections, which will be part of the uh, webinar delivered uh, course as well. But obviously there's a big emphasis on doing that in a practical sense in those workshops. And then emergencies in terms of pitch side emergencies and, and basic care, how to manage those and things you might come across if you're involved with sports teams or happen across an accident at, at a roadside or called out as a GP or um, to, to uh, deliver primary care. So they're, they're kind of the real highlights, I suppose, of the of the course, as opposed to all the things that you may have been involved with. Um, anything you'd, you'd add to that, Walter? No, I think we can we can add the floor to questions now at this stage. And um, you know, we've gone through some of the content of the program, and I suppose some of the things that people will have questions about uh, might be no harm. Just to, these are the fees that applied to the twenty twenty iteration of the programs. So they've yet to be finalized for the coming academic year, but this will give you a ballpark um, understanding of what each bit of program would cost. So there's the graduate certificate where you could do the three 10 credit, credit modules. And last year that cost 4,200 euros. So if you just wanted to take, you know, kind of three of the four modules that we run in year one of the program um, and exit with a graduate certificate, um, you can do so. If you want to do four modules and the clinical placement, which is worth 20 credits, which comes at the start of year two um, and exit with a graduate diploma, um, the cost for that last year was 8,400. And then the research dissertation on top of that um, gets you the MSc and that bring, and that, that fee for that in, 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 in last year was 12,600. So, so that's kind of the, the, the fee in outline and they will change. So please do check in on the website. Um, yes, one other thing that people often have comments about is a feature of this program is we've, we've, we recognize um, that many colleagues working in general practice, there are many colleagues working in physiotherapy um, might have actually done um, educational courses, programs, weekends, workshops, which they might be, which, which could count towards a recognition of prior learning. Uh, so the way that works is you identify a module, uh, you identify the content for that module, and you make an application for recognition of prior learning to say, look, I've already done a lot of this material. Um, I've already covered these are learning outcomes um, through the program and then you'll be awarded a recognition of prior learning this has an impact then on the fees that you would be liable for um, yeah just in terms of the workload I suppose this is another important point um, lots of students will have so, so it is a substantial undertaking um, it's, 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 it's a university qualification so you know kind of there's a in order to get a university master's level qualification or diploma level qualification, there's a certain number of hours that you have to spend um, working. So for example, um, you know, one of the modules that you might take in the autumn semester next year would have an indicative workload of 200 hours broken down thus. So maybe 70 hours of online content, 14 hours of online seminars and webinars like this. 16 hours of practicals, 70 hours where you're reflecting on your clinical practice, um, group activities such as group projects and other such activity, five hours, and then self-directed learning, maybe another 25 hours to bring that up to a total of 200 hours. So that's the workload that would be associated with a typical 10 credit postgraduate module at a university diploma or master's level. Now, obviously that doesn't mean you have to be somewhere for 200 hours you notice that the only time where you have to be somewhere is the 14 hours of online learning via webinars or seminars and the practicals um, workshops, which would be typically 16 hours. So again, you know, kind of, we think this is very much, you know, kind of compatible with the workload of busy practitioners. Um, so does the orthopedic part of the program uh, which we'll talk about in a second, and is the primary care part of the programme. So again, 
There's two modules in the first year um, that have an orientation towards primary care in general. One of these relates to research methods and the other one relates to basically hot topics in primary care and general practice. Um, with the latter one, we invite in a colleague um, to talk about you know, kind of the latest developments in a particular area. Um, many people who are working as GPs and who, are, who have been fulfilling their CME and CPD requirements are apply for a recognition of prior learning in respect of this module, and you could do likewise. Um, although those who've opted to do it have actually got a lot from it because we do bring in um, quite a good selection of experts to talk about basically hot topics in their particular area. Um, research Maths module is very good. Um, it's run by our colleague, Dr. Debbie Wallace, who works in the UCD Clinical Research Center. You know, people will have covered this type of content in other programs that they may have studied on. Um, so again, if you will then have an opportunity to apply for a recognition of prior learning, you might be able to do so. Okay. Um, so there's two questions here, Walter. Um, okay, so I think that's... So Seamus, is there anything else you want to add maybe about the three orthopedics modules and the clinical placements, which I think will be really useful. And I think yeah. if everyone would like to join us now and turn on their cameras, we can uh, open the floor to questions. So there's two questions in the chat already. Ashling uh, has asked, are there lectures given by advanced physiotherapists? No, no all the lectures are given by um, special or consultants, I should say. And there's a mix of orthopedic consultants, rheumatologists, and um, sports and exercise medicine consultants giving the lectures. So that's the um, the blend of the, the faculty, I suppose. And the Keith has asked, is the clinical placement observation only, or is there a clinical examination assessment? So uh, during the course of those um, two modules covering the whole orthopedic syllabus, there's a, obviously didactic lectures and reading material given in relation to the examination and assessment. And that's further emphasized in the workshops where there's you know, hands-on practical um, uh, practice and assessments of examination using models as student models who, 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 uh, who function uh, allowing them to be examined. And then in the clinical placement, which is in the second year, um, you're partnered up with a consultant and you'll be essentially shadowing them and the, the expectation is that they will go through their examination technique with you and, and help you hone your skills in that respect. So I don't know if that answer your question, Keith, or any other questions you or anyone else wants to ask. And, and uh, Keith has asked, Walter, if you could show the second slide again. Second last slide again, I think. Okay. So the three, the, the primary care components we have in, in year one. Uh, so year one consists of the orthopedics bit and the MSK bit, which is the two modules, which maybe um, Seamus will talk about a little bit in a second, and two primary care oriented modules. One of which is a research methods focus and the other of which has a topics in primary care and general practice focus. So the um, research methods uh, contains I guess most of the things that you'd expect to find covered in a research methods module, focusing very much on helping you to conduct um, reviews of the literature and practical projects that might help you in your practice. And the, this is particularly useful in helping you to prepare for the project that you're going to do in the second year. Also then, sorry, with the Hot topics in general practice. Um, we invite um, between 12 and 14 colleagues who are experts in particular areas and we get them to focus on their on a, on a topic that is particularly relevant to general practice at the moment. So there's a selection of some of the covered um, so we have people in looking at you know, quality improvement, um, business management, uh, hot topics in paediatrics and child health, cardiovascular, respiratory, chronic diseases, ear, noses and, ear, nose and throat issues, public health, pharmacology and therapeutics, endocrinology and diabetes. So again, a wide range of stuff. But um, those of you who are working in general practice, Many colleagues who've worked in general practice have been able to successfully apply for a recognition of prior learning in respect of 
participating in this module. What that means is you don't do the module, but you still get the credit for having done the module. And you also have a reduced requirement in terms of the fee that you would pay for the program. So I hope that's the question answered. Um, following today, um, you, you obviously have Stephen's email address and Sinead's um, contact details. Please feel free to pop either myself or Sinead or indeed Seamus a uh, query or question. Um, we look, we're happy to you know, engage with individuals and give you a call back, you know, kind of to discuss, to talk you through some of the issues um, that you may have. So Ashley has asked another question there, is there a minimum level of experience you'd expect from a physiotherapist taking the course? And uh, not really, no. I mean, once you're, you've graduated and you're, you're physically in practice, um, this essentially walks you through from quite a basic level, which, you know, you, you, as a physiotherapist, you'd be, frankly, far more uh, expert genuinely than a, than a medical graduate in, in terms of musculoskeletal examination. So as a physiotherapist, you're well positioned to, uh, to, to begin this course. What I thought I might do is, Walter, just quickly just give people an idea of what the course content looks like. I'm just going to share my screen here if I can. Uh, and this one here. Okay, can you can see also, can you see that there, Walter? Yeah, you see the hip. Okay, perfect. So this is just uh, to give you an example. So this was just uh, after Christmas week two. So this is just uh, some of the content that was covered in this. So there's some background reading, as you can see here. So uh, there was videos on the anatomy and examination of the hip, some papers that uh, we wanted people to have a, a look over and, and some videos. Um, there was a, some more uh, material about examination of the hip and then um, about radiological examination of the lower extremity as well. And then the, there was a webinar later in the week, which uh, was recorded here. So if you do happen to meet, miss the webinar on whatever evening due to you know, work pressures or whatever, they're recorded. So they're available to review subsequently. And they're there during the course of the year then as a, um, a facility and a resource that you can tap into later on uh, to, to go back and look over things. So, you know, the whole syllabus is done in this degree of depth. Obviously, over the course of the year, yeah, we can give a broad overview, which is, frankly, you, you reach a level really of, I suppose, a first year orthopedic registrar is, is, is a level that we kind of expect people to have attained by the time that they've finished, at least in terms of knowledge exposure. You're not going to go and, and do a joint replacement from it. But, you know, if, if you want to do that, you can always go back and do orthopedics full bore. So this is kind of prepares you. you you'd be well set to uh, work in an ED, looking at any musculoskeletal trauma, function with sports teams, function in primary care. Certainly from a physio point of view, you're, you're well, well, well set to take on any of the challenges you'd face on a day-to-day basis. Um, I'm gonna just stop screen sharing there. Um, any questions about that or anything else uh, anyone would like to ask? Uh, let's see, uh, Anna Rose has asked, do the practical days usually take place in a particular weekday? Yes, typically on a, on a Friday, uh, Anna Rose. So typically it's, it's an all day Friday. So it is two per, per module. So in, in the first year, in those two modules, there's a total of four days over that time frame. So the, the final date for them has to be decided yet um, for this coming academic year. So they'll be announced a number of months in advance. So you'd have plenty of time to know that they're coming up. But unfortunately, because they're very much hands-on and in person and they'll be in Belfield, uh, there is no work around for those. So, Obviously, if someone's unwell or there's some other reason, obviously, um, we could work something out around those. Uh, but you, you really do need to, uh, to be prepared to attend those. Uh, Ashley's asking, uh, being qualified for six years, is there enough content for you to advance your practice? Uh, for example, in radiology, et cetera, is this directed similarly to the first contact practitioner posts in the UK? Um, I'm not familiar with the first contact uh, practitioner posts in the UK, Ashling. Um, if you'd like to elaborate on that, if you if you if you want to speak, or uh, if, if there's any questions, I, don't, I might be able to answer you in person. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so in the UK, they've rolled out basically these first contact practitioners, um, where they're working uh, basically alongside GPs, but they're, I mean, depending on the area, they're they're kind of different, but mostly basically seeing the musculoskeletal cases and then identifying whether they actually do need to be, you know, seen by a doctor or not yeah, so exa exactly um, and managing them first off. 
Yeah, so the HSE is doing the exact same thing in Ireland, uh, MSK triage. So th- th- you'd be well versed to do that, uh, in, you know, having completed this this course. Now, obviously, it depends on the level of experience. If you're already doing a role like that and you're very competent, you may not, you know, get a whole lot out of this. It d- obviously depends on your level of expertise to begin with. But having completed this, you'd be well versed and well prepared to take on that sort of role. Okay, thank you. No problem. I might add there, you know, that's, that's certainly where the... Um, where the clinical placement or the observership would come in um, because you know we're, we don't this is not a program designed for like hundreds of students you know kind of because we're you know it's, it's it's a small program you know kind of with somewhere between 10 and 15 students so you know we will be able to try and facilitate some type of um, clinical placement that might be aligned to what people might want to do with regards to where they are in their career. Um, and ju- just in terms of the professional background of students on the program. Um, so it's, it's broken down basically GPs, um, doctors working in emergency medicine, and physiotherapists and physicians assistants, um, which is great, which is great actually, because it means that it's a multidisciplinary group. So, you know, when it comes to group projects and assignments, you know, kind of having an opportunity to kind of work alongside colleagues from other disciplines is 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 a has been a good feature of the program. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, kind of um, our first cohort of students, many of them uh, have, have have since enrolling on the program. Probably totally coincidentally, have you know kind of progressed in their career. So it has been something that particularly for you know kind of people working in clinical therapy, for example, you know, kind of having completed a program like this is something that can advance or help people to advance in their career. Not guaranteeing it, but, you know, kind of, I think it's certainly good evidence that, you know, I think it's, it seems to be something that's a good thing to have going into, you know, kind of applying for new posts. So Walter, I'll direct this one to you. Connor has yeah. asked, uh, do you feel physiotherapists are suitable for uh, module on contemporary issues for GP, or ha- how d- how do we address that? Yeah, no, hundred percent. You know, kind of. Um, so we sort of designed the program very much with GPs in mind, and then we kind of had to almost redesign the program because we realised that it was actually capturing this sort of multidisciplinary group of students. Um, so we had to basically kind of reframe the sort of the content that we've taught on that module um, so that it could you know, it, it was accessible and relevant to healthcare professionals who broadly who are working in the community. And they all got a lot from it. Um, we actually ran it alongside another program, which had, you know, which was a mental health in primary care program. So it meant that as well as our doctors working in emergency medicine and physicians assistants and, um, colleagues in physiotherapy, we also had psychology and practice nursing and other nurses working in the community as well as GP trainees. And it actually worked really, really well having that diverse range of healthcare professionals on that module, not on all the other modules, but just on that module. Works really well. So the content, I suppose more importantly, the assessment is designed with um, the needs of colleagues from multiple backgrounds um, in, you know, in mind. And when you're asked to, you know, kind of write up case reports or whatever, we ask you to write up case reports from your practice. So, you know, you take the content and you take the bits that are relevant to you. Any other questions? Does anyone like to ask anything else? No, dinner time. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say, just off what Walter was saying, um, one of the physios um, who's a specialist in Galway has actually been saying they're developing a new pathway for um, more advanced practice physios separate to the clinical specialist one, the HSE. But he said they're still working on it, but one of the criteria for entry into that will be a master's. So this might be a good kind of way to get in towards that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't heard that, but that's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so thank thank you everyone. Th- thank you, Seamus. Um, 
as I said, my, my email address is there. Uh, please do feel free to bounce me any questions if anyone's been too shy or reticent to, uh, to, to, you know, kind of to comment this evening. Well, there's one there's final there's question, question there. there, sorry. Yeah. Um, do physios need to be working in NHS, HSC, or is it in private practice? No. Uh, you can be working in any practice, um, be it HSC, NHS, private practice. Some of our physios that are on the course at the moment are in private practice, some are in public practice. So, yeah, once once uh, you're in practice, I suppose, because you need a, a case source to uh, to be able to write up the cases or at least to be able to see patients. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's a completely academic exercise for you, I suppose. So I think you get more out of it, uh, you know, if, if you're actually in, in practice. But no, uh, no, you don't have to be in any specific type of practice. Is that all the questions? I think so. Okay. Okay. Good night, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining Thanks. us. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, have a good evening. Uh, pop us an email if you have any questions. And we look forward to seeing you in September, hopefully. Thank uh, you. Have a good evening. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, Seamus. Speak to you soon. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.